Hi, HR Nation. Welcome back to another episode of the HR Leaders Podcast, the show where we explore the future of work with industry experts and HR executives in the world's leading global brands. Today, I'm joined by Trapper Yates, who's the head of global compensation at HP. Welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you, Chris. Yeah, good to be here. Doing uh, doing well. Like I said just a minute ago, my kids are on spring break, so hopefully they're not uh, popping in, but they're uh, they're all home with me today. Well, now what they're going to do is one's going to jump online and do some gaming. The other's going to stream some Netflix. So then all of a sudden your Zoom calls going to stop working. <laughs> no, I'm joking. If it starts <laughs> lagging, I think we'll know the, uh, the culprits for sure. Listen, if you've got four kids in the house, you've got to have some good Wi-Fi. If you want to get yeah. some work. <laughs> get yeah, some work you done. do. Um, summers, it gets tested, I think. Yeah, when they're home, they're kind of streaming or doing games or whatever. And um so far, so good. Uh, got to got to make sure you got the good Wi-Fi set up. Well, on, on that on that point, then um, from a personal perspective, tell everyone a little bit more about you personally and sort of your journey to where we are we are now. Yeah, no, happy to do it. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I think from a, from a career standpoint, I uh, I went to college, and uh, when you and I talked before, I kind of mentioned this. I was a pre med major in college and started kind of going down that path. And, uh, my second midway through my second year, I kind of, you know, took stock again and reassessed, reevaluated kind of where I was at. Um, the biology and the chemistry was just killing me. And I, I had taken an intro to business class and I thought, you know, that's really interesting. I like the econ courses that I had taken as well. So I made a switch to, to go into business, but, um, that, that switch, I kind of was like, I don't know what to do with it. So I was, you know, pursuing kind of supply chain management, um, took a job out of college working in a role in finance and accounting. So it's kind of, uh, it's just where I ended up, um, had a, a great experience, loved, um, the company I was with, loved a lot of things about it, but, um, so did you around... do finance and accounting? So you actually did finance yeah. and accounting as well. Yeah, so, was... so many, okay. Right. So many different route. That sure. You... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I, so I did, I did a finance and accounting role. Um, and it's not typical for somebody to be in HR, um, from, <laughs> but it was actually a really good switch. And what led me to it was, you know, the sort of great recession of, of 08 and 09. And as mm. things started to kind of slow down with, um, with the company I was with, you know, it was, it was still, there was still work to be done. Um, I still had a job. I was gainfully employed. I was appreciative of that, but as things slowed down in my career trajectory, I, I had a chance to kind of do that self-reflection and say, um, Hey, projecting myself 10 years down the road, if things go as well as they possibly could here, am I happy with what I see uh, and what I'm doing kind of 10 years from now? And the answer was like, I, I just, I don't know that I'm excited about that. And I had had some work uh, done, volunteered and done some work uh, with college recruiting. And I thought, gosh, I really like that. Is there perhaps a future in HR? And so I, I stopped work uh, full-time, did a full-time MBA program for two years. And during that transition to my career track to HR from finance and then moved into the tech industry, which was uh, where I was really interested. And uh, so, yeah, so then I, I went through a rotational development program with HP, um, have been in compensation since I finished that up, uh, just various roles in comp and have had the opportunity to kind of grow and, and, uh, and lead a team now in the compensation organization. And, you know, as you mentioned, kind of lead the uh, all of our global benchmarking and structures, our bonus programs, um, the, you know, making sure that uh, employees are paid fairly accurately and that we're um, creating programs that are engaging for employees. Uh, I know you're yeah. working on quite a lot of exciting things, um, but um, at the moment, a company, but I'd love to talk about the journey that, that you and the business have been on in terms of reinventing what recognition means at, mm -hmm. at HP. So yeah. it'd be great to sort of kick things off and talk about what was the sort of reason you went on that journey? What was mm -hmm. the sort of the thought process? So it's a good question. I think recognition is important in any company and the bigger you get, I think you deal with different challenges. And when the teams are dispersed and global, like they are at HP, it's like, um, you know, I worked at a, a, when I was in college at a sales company and you'd show up, uh, you'd show up at the trainings and different things. And here's the sort of CEO of the company passing out, you know, subway gift cards and things and and that was sort of recognition you felt really good about it but you get a company that's global you get a company the size of hp and you can't walk around the office handing out uh, uh subway gift cards you can't have donut fridays necessarily because half your team's in another or most of your team's in another office so we actually have a, an employee engagement um team at hp there was a, a process and uh, a 
uh, system for recognition, I would say. Um, but a few years ago, around 2018, we embarked on this journey, as you said, to kind of reinvent recognition. And the impetus for that was really, can we improve what we've got today? Um, how do we make it better? How do we make it world class? How do we make sure that employees feel valued for the work that they're doing? And not just through, you know, I'm a, I'm a compensation guy and I know that everybody appreciates their comp. But at the same time, that's not the sticky recognition. It isn't the feel good recognition. It's like that's the uh, that's the agreement between the employer and employee. You know, you, you pay me and I come to work. It's table stakes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Table stakes. The recognition is something it should be unexpected. It should be just in time. It should be something that's memorable for the employee. So that was what started um, this reinventing recognition. And for us, <clears throat> you know, I think initially we thought, it's, it's probably the platform. It's probably if we can get the right platform, we get the right vendor to partner with, uh, they'll tell us how we can fix recognition, how we can do it better. They've worked with big companies like HP, and they're going to tell us the right way to do it. Um, I would say one of the main lessons we learned, I think, pretty early on was that it's not a one size fits all solution. And talking, you know, with our recognition lead, and, and she mentioned this concept, which is really good. It's sort of like buying a house, you know, if you've ever bought a house, your real estate agent can't tell you, this is the perfect house. This is, you know, going to be the best house for you and your family. It's really, what do I need for my family? What's important to me? And I want to find the house that fits those needs and would be the best for me. That's the way we found this too. Nobody was giving us the perfect solution. It's really, we had to, to your point earlier, do that self-reflection and say, what do we want to come from this? And then is there a house, is there a framework that can help us do that? And I think that that was first and foremost, uh, what we were looking to do is um, find that framework, but we had to do that self-reflection first. What was the next process from there? Was it then reaching out to the employees and asking them <laughs> what, yeah, they, so what we, they want rather than asking the vendor? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we had obviously, um, like most companies, we have an annual uh, survey, Voice Insights Action is what we call it at HP. Uh, we also moved to more spot surveys to take, uh, take a pulse and say what's important to you. And uh, we continue to do that. You know, as you look at, uh, like you mentioned, through the pandemic, people's thoughts and their feelings about work and, and things have changed and shifted. And so it's become more important. We now do these quick click surveys where you can get real time information from, from your employee group. Um, you know, you often hear that from, you walk around you talk to employees and you get that. But once again, when everybody's remote and when everybody's working in, you know, 50 plus countries, um, you have to have a way to gather that information. So, so we did try to do that through the, the course of kind of um, that process, uh, you know, reinventing this recognition, finding out what's important. One of the things that we did that we were able to implement once we kind of um, got a, a, a partner for this process, um, we did build, you can fill out a recognition profile. And so we ask employees to do this. It's obviously only as valuable as the input that we get from the employee, but they can say, these are the ways I like to be recognized. And these are some of the coolest, the things that I would love uh, to be recognized with as a manager. It's not so much what I think I would like as an employee. It's what would they like and how would they feel appreciated? What were some I, of the memorable ones? <laughs> The, the memorable just, recognition. Just, just, yeah, it just stood out because I'm, you know, I, even yeah. in the past when I asked that question to my global sales team, I, there were some always that surprised me. I'm like, "Whoa, well, okay, never would have thought of that." <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Well, and, and I, I actually, I, I think on an earlier podcast, you mentioned somebody that really wanted a belt, right? A, yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Just, I want, I want to, yeah, yeah, a Hermes belt, yeah, Hugo Boss belt, yeah, Hugo Boss belt, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, that's exactly right. If you, as a manager and a leader, can understand what's important to those people, it may not be what you want, but it may be what they want. So, um, I, I'll give you one example, and this was kind of a, a fun one. Um, <clears throat> one of one of the the guys on my team had done his recognition profile. And, you know, we had a good relationship, but sometimes you just don't talk about these, these interesting or crazy things that, that people want, but he, on his recognition profile, he'd said something like, 
I've always wanted to try the 72 ounce steak at the big Texas steakhouse. Um, and this is like a challenge, right? A massive steak. And I think you get an hour to eat it. And uh, if you do it, you get your picture on the wall. There's like a live stream of this steakhouse. You can, you can actually watch oh, people it. Attempting, attempting the challenge, oh, right? God. <laughs> But he uh, he had put that on his profile, and he created this uh, new process, this uh, this tool that basically allowed us to step away from uh, an external vendor that we were using for this process, save the company money, saved us time, fit our needs better. I mean, it was really an impressive piece of work that he'd done above and beyond his daily work. And so I worked with with my leader. I said, I want to do something special, and we looked at that and said we can make this happen. And so I uh, called it a special urgent meeting um, that, you know, he was invited to. And, and during the course of that meeting, um, it wasn't actually a meeting on a new project. It was, we just had this, Hey, this is what we're going to do. We want you and your family to go up and, you know, we provided the uh, airline gift card for him to get his uh, tickets up there, um, accommodations, the gift card for the, the restaurant. Okay. So that if he didn't, meet the challenge. He, you know, it was no cost to him and it was a really cool experience. So I think memorable because it was something that he'd said, Oh, this would be neat. It didn't come up in the course of our conversation because you're typically not talking to your boss about, Hey, I want to go eat a big steak. Yeah, when would you bring that up? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. It just doesn't come up in the normal course of conversation. But uh, so I think that was kind of a neat experience where the profile, the recognition profile helped us to understand what would have been a cool and memorable recognition and ended up being that way. I'll share one other example. An employee, a colleague of mine, his house had been flooded. He'd had some flooding and his refrigerator got completely destroyed and uh, he didn't have a refrigerator. He's in Mexico. And so his leader, just knowing that like there was a lot of problems, but one of them was like this refrigerator and they didn't have a refrigerator. Um, they were able to do something similar and say, we know this is a need. And, uh, Hey, they had, a, they had a special meeting and said, we're, you're going to, uh, refrigerator delivered, uh, sort of next week. And, uh, to help you, we know this has been important for your family. And so yeah, him yeah. telling me that experience and just how valuable it was to him, it was just so specific to his exactly. needs in his particular situation. And those two people don't never forget those moments Yeah, that will stay with them forever. <laughs> That's the difference I feel like from cash, you know, when we talk about cash bonuses and things, everybody's going to really appreciate that. But the, the memory of it is quicker. You don't remember where you spent that last bonus in most cases, but you always remember going and eating that steak and, you know, or getting that refrigerator delivered. And every time you open that refrigerator, you're going to remember you know, your manager that cared enough to uh, to do something special for you and recognize the contributions you've made to the team in, in a way that was memorable. Who can see those profiles? Like, is it just a manager? or of, and, and do they get notifications if someone in the team updates it, for example? Because obviously people's motivations change and sure. evolve. Yeah, you don't get notifications. Actually, that's a great idea. Something I'll probably look to see if we can actually implement. Um, <laughs> as of right now, you don't get notifications. But as a manager, yeah, you can go in and say, um, what is it, you know, and I've looked at some of my team hasn't completed profiles at this point. Um, and you try to kind of through conversation, dig through what's important. Um, others have, but you can see it, it doesn't get notified. You know, you don't get notified, but I think that's something else that's important is if the recognition is top of mind. And if people see that, that people are being recognized according to kind of what they put out there, um, it encourages employees to kind of go and complete yeah, that. Because if that you said about the steak example, no one would have believed you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they were like, no, you're not going to do that, right? But that's the yeah, thing. Yeah. Like, it's like it's good that for people to be in, in teams and knowing what everyone else is striving for. I think it's totally. Important. I think it's important. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, we, Chris, if I could add something, we've talked about a lot of these ways of recognizing and there's, there's a cost to it, you know, like there is a cost in terms of time. There's a cost in terms of money to be able to make that experience happen, you know, of the steakhouse or the refrigerator. But we can't underestimate that there's a lot of ways to recognize that don't cost anything, you know, 100%. and it's, it's the thank you and the sincere appreciation, very specific during, you know, conversations with your employees is important, but I'll share an example. And this was one, um, uh, that my leader um, now did uh, back before I reported directly into her, but we had worked on this, this program and uh, we looked at naming it something and it was like, Hey, what are we going to name this new program? And we, so I was like, Oh, I'm going to run this contest. And I reached out to, to people and, and they gave some ideas. And we had this one guy really creative and it, it was 
a lot of our stuff is acronyms and he had done this he called it the unicorn program and uh, it was an acronym for like university college retention and it was it was silly right and uh, but i laughed about it and i brought that back to our program management meeting um you know and as we continued to kind of push this program forward well first of all she was like that's there's no way we're not naming this program the unicorn program i said i know it was a joke it didn't come through in the email but i thought it was a funny and creative name so i figured i'd throw it out there uh we end up naming the program something else it gets launched um everything you know was was great i thought they missed a trick by the way i'm just putting it out there i'm a fan of the unicorn i thought that was that was a bit, I, I thought it was kind of a fun that's, name. A, that's a good name anyway go on go yeah, yeah yeah so it was creative and uh but it, anyway probably three four weeks later i go out to my mailbox and i open it up and there's this like pink card addressed to me and i open it and it's uh it's a unicorn card and it was a birthday card but she had crossed out you know have a magical birthday and said have a magical launch of the you know the the program that we had named it at that point it was kind of like an inside joke of unicorn haha that's not what we named it uh pink unicorn card for me and didn't cost really anything but it was the thought that she appreciated the work that i'd done in getting the program moved over the line. Um, and I felt like it was kind of, I just put a smile on my face to know that she had been out, saw this unicorn card and thought this would be perfect. I'm going to send this. And, um, and I still remember that, you know, it, it meant something to me that a leader had thought about me and thought about, uh, sending that and kind of that inside joke kind of thing. Yeah. You get really bond and quite great relationships over those moments. Um, yeah. as well, like recently one of our podcast sponsors actually sent um and we've got a, a, a package in the post and it was from the us and i was like Who, who's sending us something from the us and it was a signed photo of um dominic hashik which is an ice hockey player goal, goalkeeper and it's yeah. my co-founder's favorite like he's like idol but it was a signed oh, a signed picture yeah sent and i don't even remember even mentioning that in the conversation but i did obviously um cool. uh, to tom finn if you're listening tom and yeah. uh like that meant so much like to shane and and obviously it's cool to see me as well like i was like oh that's so cool but like it's the thought yeah. that went into it yeah as well absolutely right? it's like, yeah wow. no the thought is like the most important thing you know, they say the thoughts what counts and you can't overstate that um even in a company you know the size of hp knowing that your manager cares knowing that the leader above your manager is sometimes even more cool to know that like wow um they recognize they see me they appreciate what i'm doing yeah um yeah even just like uh, again i write back to sales because that was pretty much most of my career until i started this company like we had like um i don't even know what you call them you know like on the stock trading floor you have those black kind of um screens oh, yeah. that go, scroll across sideways what are they called yeah. Uh, the marquees, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know. know anyway, that. but anytime but, yeah. so they had them, they had them on all six, seven floors of the company. And whenever you got a deal, your name came up and went across, and it was like Chris Rainey, and then the deal amount, and then the company. Yeah. So the whole oh, entire yeah. business would see it, yeah. like that you got a deal, and you would look up there after you got a deal, wait for it to come up. Like you were so excited <laughs> to That's see cool. to see it come up there, and then the CEO would come down and like shake your hand. And for me that was more exciting to get that like congratulations and the recognition in front of everyone and the name up there is it's silly as that sounds but it may yeah. sound than the actual commission or, yeah. or revenue like i was like oh my god like <laughs> my name yeah well, that's a good point. like and you're talking you're talking a group of sales people sales people typically have the you know the distinction about, of being yeah. more extroverted um and there's some people that would be mortified to have that public of recognition and so i think that's where that's the other thing we found is some people didn't want the public recognition. public recognition yeah i i i i've got a good story for you so i'll be our top salesperson um forever he was really annoying you can never beat him <laughs> yeah. was called Ka Ka cameron and yep. and he was a uh, in introvert and you no know, hardly spoke a word to anyone sat in the furthest corner of the room away from the noise but mm -hmm. he was just uh, like, photographic memory memorized every phone number of every company we work with like um like genius basically and he would win every single sales like competition he would win and we would have those gatherings like you described earlier where everyone would get together and the ceo would hand out the awards or in this case it could be fancy watches or 
here's a check for five thousand pounds for salesperson of the month and he would never turn up so it was a running joke in the company that would all go yeah. to the the roof would do the celebration and every single month everyone would burst out laughing because cameron would be downstairs on the phone yeah for sure and i'm sure he appreciated the the actual what what he got and oh yeah he did yeah like being there he and like, feeling uh, like spotlight yeah. just <laughs> makes a lot of people really uncomfortable and that's the other thing that i you know that i sort of we learned through this process is it's not just understanding what people how they want to be recognized in terms of like what but in terms of the the audience and the approach and um yeah if you get that wrong it can fall flat on its you said face another one that. before as well didn't you was it manager movie afternoon yeah. So I, I, yeah, this was another one. This is interesting because this is actually completely separate from recognition, uh, this reinvented process. Um, here in Boise, I worked with uh, a woman and she was managing a group of employees that was here in Boise. And I remember, cause we were getting information from managers and employees about what are the pain points? How could you be better at recognition? And she told me, she's like, you know, I don't even know how to, we're such a big company that I, I want to do something for my employees, but I'm, I'm going to take them. We're just going to go out and see a movie one afternoon. They all want to see the new star Wars movie and we're just going to go do it. And I don't, I'm not reimbursing that because I don't even know how, and I'm not, you know, asking for a way to reimburse that. I'm just letting, you know, sometimes as a big company, I just take the, the initiative myself to do it. And so she was an example of a manager who just um, said, I want, I want to do something nice for my employees. I want it to be memorable and you know, it's going to cost me not that much. I don't even know how to get it reimbursed or that it should be an HP expense, but she was just a manager who cared. So I think that's yeah. the other point is, um, you know, managers who think about recognition and care about making it good, um, are going to be the ones that, that do a good job with it. Um, and if it's an afterthought, sometimes it, it comes off that way i think to to employees it's as a well. good point though because in certain companies i used to get told off for doing stuff like that by my yeah. <laughs> by myself so, so we used to do a thing where like if we hit our monthly target early um i would just go out and buy everyone ice cream just and it became a thing that every time yeah. we overachieved our target or hit it early yep. if, even if it was halfway through the month Mm -hmm. and we'd already hit it, I would go to the shop and buy everyone ice creams. All I'm right. sure the team loved it, right? And that's where I, my brother-in-law was managed a door-to-door -door sales team for a while. And I remember he told me that one of the things he used to do was Monster Mondays, you know, and and he'd just like <laughs> randomly go grab one of his sales guys. I mean, they were door-to-door -door sales guys too. And they'd go to a gas station, get a monster and just hang out for 10, 15 minutes, which was a nice break from just, you know, pounding the pavement and hitting the doors and just a way for him to kind of, say all right let's go get an energy drink and hey go knock it out the rest of the day so those little things just mean so much you know and it's i don't know you think about the managers and the leaders that you've had and the things that they've done yeah even yeah. a silly unicorn card like i said but sometimes as a leader you forget that and you forget the impact that you can and, and should have sometimes even through little things but uh tough to overstate how important that is it is like a snowball i mean you do you you recognize somebody in a meaningful way and it's like oh that meant a lot to them and you feel really good about it too having made that happen and then it snowballs into like this uh, i want to do i want to do it again i want to i want to continue to have really cool experiences with my team and i, I just love that I, I let me share the other pizza one real quick because this <laughs> one was one of the coolest things different but this uh, a manager, one of the employees on the team had talked about, hey, I built this big outdoor uh, covered patio. I've got an outdoor kitchen. The last thing I want, he's like, eventually I'm going to put in an outdoor pizza oven. It's going to be a stone fired oven, uh, makes the best pizza ever. And that's like going to be the crowning jewel of my sort of outdoor kitchen. But, you know, it'll be a couple of years before I put that in. And the manager, after that conversation, there was a, an opportunity where he thought, gosh, this, this employee has just done an amazing job uh, with this project or this this work that he's been doing i want to do something special and so he made this he said look can we get this guy a stone fire pizza oven and and they were able to kind of work that out but the cool thing was the the lead for our recognition program was like let's make it special let's do something really memorable and so this is when we all were in offices 
And the manager was in a different office across the country. So he coordinated with somebody to dress up like a pizza delivery guy and uh, brought in a pizza box. And inside of it, it was empty except for a note that said something like, you know, hey, here's your, we're going to deliver your stone pizza oven to your house. Congratulations. No Thank way. you for your hard work. And so the manager's having a Zoom call with this guy. And in the middle of it, some pizza guy comes in and the, the employee's going, how on earth did this guy even get through the gate, right? Like, how did he, he's standing at my desk. He's like, I didn't order a pizza. He's like, I'm sorry to the manager. He said, I gotta, you know, let me, there's a pizza guy standing here. And the manager, of course, <laughs> kind of planned the whole thing to happen at that moment. And so he opens it and he's just like, and it was just like that moment of appreciation. Um, the manager was just so excited to be able to do that. Uh, and the employee was totally floored and surprised. And, you know, there was pictures of the fake pizza delivery guy and, and the, the employee that had received it. So once again, that there was a cost to that and there was a lot of time to actually pull it off, but I have no doubt that employee is never going to forget the experience of that moment. And then every time he fires up that pizza oven, he's going to be like, man, I had a cool manager. That guy, he, he got me and I love yeah. working for. And I'm how much more, more meaningful than that is than just getting the money. Totally. Right. Or just here's your bonus. Like, yep. Here's your fight. Coming from a comp guy, money is so important. Not, <laughs> like you said, table stakes. But at the end of the day, the memorable, the, the memorable experience with recognition, um, it's it's not in cash most often. I'll say that for sure. Yeah. What what are you outside of obviously this, which is obviously going to be an ongoing journey, and it's still I'm mm -hmm. sure. What what are you most excited about? The the thing that excites me most, like I I absolutely you know the the work that I do. Um, day to day is something that I that I really enjoy. Um, mostly the fact that what I do today impacts people. You know the, the analysis, the compensation, um, the benefits, wellness. You know is a big thing, and that falls more in the benefits space. But I get to be a part of that, and I think if I could compare and contrast the the accounting and finance for me was just numbers and figures on a page and they were important but now every time i see a number and a figure that's tied to a person and that's tied to the people that are really making the company tick so for me that really drives my motivation um and drives my excitement on a, on a daily basis about what i do yeah because even in the last conversation you mentioned well-being and some of the work you're doing as you said like yeah. you're not more excited about the app but as, as opposed to the impact yeah that is happening totally. right on, yep. on, on people so you can see that direct impact and many companies are going on this journey now of personalizing that experience uh, mm -hmm. from, a, from a comp and bend perspective is that something you you're also exploring uh you know i think we've moved in this direction for years now and so we offer things like flex funds with benefits because what's important to me as a as a father with you know four kids and, and a family is like, yeah that health insurance is gonna be really important but yeah. sometimes for younger employees or employees in countries where there's a, a good social health system that may be less important and what might be important to them is time off or um the physical benefit you know so there's a there's a minimum level of certain benefits that we give but then we want to give employees the flexibility to kind of choose within that and the wellness space is something i really like i mean it's financial wellness it's physical wellness mental wellness and all of that's important but offering ways we have a really cool program um you know in terms of your physical wellness that you track your steps you track different things you do ha daily habits and if you track those you can actually get rewarded for it and um it's still kind of funny because it's not like you know it's it, it's different than your salary it's going to be smaller but I always save that and I'm like, ooh, I just got free running shoes because I'll buy myself a new pair of running shoes with the money that I got from, you know, tracking my steps and things. So it's this perpetual cycle of um, tracking and taking care of your wellness it leads to, you know, the ability to kind of buy those new running shoes or that cool new running watch or whatever it is you want. Um, before I let you go, I want to jump into our quick fire round. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to ask you some questions, but you've only got 30 seconds for each question. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's yeah. do it. Um, what are your hobbies and passions outside of the office? Well, four kids. I mean, my family is <laughs> a huge passion enough. hobby. Um, I, I do coach. I coach two soccer teams in the spring and fall. My youngest two. Oh, cool. uh, pretty well with the soccer club for my oldest. And um, try to stay active and fit. I've done, you know, did the Boston Marathon. I've done a half Ironman. And so trying to do events that keep me active and motivated is, is another important thing to me. Is having that end goal what keeps you going? Do you struggle like to work out when it's just working out for the sake of working out as opposed to having like, here's my goal. I've got a marathon yeah. coming up. I can't really skip a day when I'm going to go. It definitely, <laughs> helps. 
it definitely helps. I'll, I'll say I don't have any events on the horizon right now, okay. and it's actually been okay because I still I still am motivated, kind of doing my five six days a week. Mm -hmm. But it's just a different type, you know. When I was doing okay. the triathlon, I was like, I got to get on the bike. I don't care. Like the weather's terrible outside. Gonna I got to get on the bike and do you know forty miles and and knock this out. And so it did motivate me to do those things. Whereas now I'd be like. I'm not going to get on the bike today. I'm going to stay inside. I'm going to do a workout, you know, so yeah. um, di different types, but it, it is important to me. And I think if it's important, you find the time. Yeah. If you could change one thing about, you know, reward, reward or, or recognition, what would you change? Um, I think it would be what we've talked about, helping people know that it doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be um, something crazy or expensive, but it's really about, making it personal and and knowing the people and how they want to be recognized sort of that that new golden rule you know it's not do unto others as you would have them do to you it's do unto others as they would have done to themselves and so mm -hmm. um knowing how people want to be recognized is is important and then making it personal and and meaningful um how would your family and friends describe what you do for a living my kids would probably say I make computers um, because I work for HP. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or or I, I'm on meetings. That's what they'd say. Um, I think if pushed, you know, kind of my wife and other people, do, you know, he, he manages pay for, for people at HP, which some people would say he makes cuts the paychecks. Well, that's payroll. So it's kind of like, <laughs> I, I think a lot of them would have a really tough time, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> um, what legacy do you want to leave behind for your kids? Um. You know, a, a religious leader said once, yeah, no success can compensate for failure in the home. So for me, it's the legacy that I want to leave is being present with my kids and my family and being um, the type of father and, and husband and, and family person that uh, was there and not that I was so involved in work. And I do feel like having that balance and being able to be, you know, both a family person helps me at work and, and, you know, being engaged in my work helps me in my family life. But I certainly don't ever want to end up in a situation where they say he, all he had, all he did was work. Um, so that's yeah. important to me. Mm, it's not easy, right? It's a, it's a challenge. Yeah. To, to balance it. And yeah. every spring fall when I start soccer coaching, you know, I'm like, ah, do I really have the time for this? But you know, it's like, <laughs> you make it's a little thing. My, my kids love it. So I'm like, let's do it. That's quality time as well. Right. Um, have you ever considered moving uh, roles like outside going to explore a different career um yeah i mean for me like we said early i moved out of finance into hr and i think i continue to kind of say is this the direction that i want to be and i'm definitely really happy and and pleased with uh and really find a lot of satisfaction in my role but always open to the fact that hey i've, I've got a fairly longish career ahead of me and who knows what the future may bring. Um, I think down the road, smaller business and, and managing uh, more holistically the aspects of the business could be an interesting approach, but we'll just have to see. I'm open to it. Yeah. What would you say the biggest investment that you've made in yourself? For me, it was stopping work full-time and, and going to pursue an MBA full-time. I mean, I think I looked at that time, am I doing this part-time in the evening, what am, but for me, it made sense. And when I did the, did the ROI, even stopping work, I had two kids at the time. Um, um, it was tough. And so from that standpoint, it was an investment, but one that I've been very happy with. And, uh, you know, even though it was a challenge at the time, it was definitely huge for me. That's a, do you mind me asking a personal question? How, how did that work financially? Did you save up in advance or like, cause that's, uh, we, that's we had some savings, um, but also took out some student loans to be able to do that. Wow. Um, my two kids were very young. So my wife had been staying home with them and she continued to do so even when I was at work, um, was able to do an internship midway through and which was paid, um, at HP. And then also, um, had some part-time work my second year and which helped to offset it, but, uh, definitely came out of that with, uh, with some bills to pay, but, uh, That's amazing, like I said, the R yeah, the ROI on it, you have to do that calculation and it definitely made sense for me. And it's amazing that you have such a supportive wife that would do that. Cause I'm Absolutely. sure she was like, what do you want to do? <laughs> so I mean, yeah, she was like, yeah, if you think this is right, let's go. And she's always wow, been that she's way. She's the right one then clearly. <laughs> oh, absolutely. absolutely. But uh, from others, you know, others like, oh, are you sure you're going to get I bet up, you uh, had that from the rest of the family. Right. Or like friends yeah. are like, what are you doing? When we, uh, when I told, when I said to, 
I went to, well, we just bought a house, we was, you know, having our first baby, spent all our life savings on the wedding, the house, had no, pretty much no money left. And I said to my wife, I'm going to quit my job and, <laughs> and start this company. She was like, go for it. We'll, wow. fi we'll figure it out. Right. And mm -hmm. as you can imagine, her parents, my parents, friends, family were like, no, yeah. don't do it. And don't get me wrong. I had like three months worth of like outgoings, like basically I had three months to make, to make it work. Otherwise I had to go get a job yeah. and, and we're here still. So clearly it worked out, but like, awesome. you know, you, you got the, you know, I was like, I've definitely got the right woman in my life. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Support, well, it, it, she believed in you, right? And that's where, like, with my wife too, it was like, "Hey, if you think this is right, let's do it." And and it made sense, and it, it definitely worked out. But not yeah. everybody thought it would. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, who says the one person in your career just get, had the biggest impact? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a ton, right? So it's tough to boil it down from my first manager to my current leader. Um, I think they're all important, but going back to what we just talked about, my, my wife has been absolutely the, the critical point for me. I mean, I'll tell you, we moved 13 times in our first 10 years of marriage. Really? And that was, wow. Yeah, it was some education. It was some for, for you know, work. Um, and she was just supportive every step of the way and kind of, you know, you can't understate the value of having somebody no. in your corner, somebody that believes in you probably more than you believe in yourself sometimes. And so, uh, have to credit, uh, her for that's a good there. point, by the way, because my, by the way, I made it sound like it was my choice, but it was more of my wife saying, stop talking about it and go do and it. do it. <laughs> I remember it she got so annoyed one night I was complaining about how much I didn't like work and stuff like that. And she was like, that's it. You're not allowed to talk about this again or complain unless you go and do it. And I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, fair, fair play, fair play. I'll stop yeah. talking and start doing. Um, yeah. And then, then last question, what would you give to, what advice would you give to sort of the, the HR leaders or, you know, common band leaders of tomorrow? Um, I would say look for opportunities to say yes um, and opportunity instead of no. And so you'll be given opportunities to, or, and don't close doors, right? I mean, you, you're going to be given opportunities uh, different projects or, Hey, maybe explore this aspect of your career. And if you say no, and you close that door, you'll never know what may have opened up behind that. And to me, that shift from finance to HR came from raising my hand to say, let me help with some of this recruiting. Um, maybe it was uncomfortable. Maybe it was different for me. I really found that I enjoyed it and it opened up this whole new set of doors. So be careful on the doors you close, um, look for opportunities to say yes. Mm -hmm probably one of the reasons why you move so many times, right? <laughs> yeah. Saying that's yes. Probably it, no, so. but, but, but that's a shared um, piece of feedback I get from many successful HR leaders is that they say yes. In, 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 in most cases, it's the most com uncomfortable choice, but mm -hmm. it's the ones mm -hmm. that they look back on and say, those are the moments that defined who I am, where we are and being in this position today, I would not have been there without. Yeah. So I think that's amazing advice. Um, well, listen, thanks for coming on the show. It means a lot. I appreciate yeah, it. Pleasure. I appreciate Great you. Be I'll here. be definitely calling you for parenting advice now. <laughs> <laughs> As, Sounds good. It's, it may not be perfect, but happy to. <laughs> Never there. perfect. But listen, we wish you all the best until we next week. But uh, until then, um, you know, good luck with everything. Good luck with soccer. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Good, good to connect. Thanks, Chris.